So we're going to welcome everybody to today's session. We're going to have a uh, special guest uh, today. His name is Alex Katerinakis, a hockey player. And while we're recording the session, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just inspired by uh, one of the students here. And uh, there's a deer in the back. And it just reminds me when you're doing your, I don't call it homework, I call it home fun. And um, their head is just hanging in the back. And it reminds me of a story when you have two teachers, one who just walk in, someone walks into a classroom and says, oh my God, wow, how do you, how do you get all everyone to do their homework? I call it home fun, of course, because work, help me out guys, should be fun. Mm -hmm. So let me hear you say the word fun. Fun. I can't hear you. Let me hear you say fun. 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 A higher level of fun, by the way, as a quick side note, can be enjoying. Would you agree that enjoying is better than fun? If you agree, let's get you guys involved. Give me a thumbs up. A virtual thumbs up or a real thumbs up? Lola, I like you, Lola, because you're often one of the fastest. So enjoyment can be better than fun. And we'll take it to the next level. When you savor the moment, you look at a person like Roger Federer, great tennis player, and some of these athletes who declare, hey, you know what, this is the last year that I will be on tour. This is the last season that I'm in. Went to a Corey Hart concert, I'll spare details. He said, this is the last concert that he's doing. Of course they do another one, but you can savor the moment. You can really enjoy it, okay? So just to, just to show you, there's different levels of fun. When you're in school, you know, it's fun, great, but you can take it to the next level when you're playing your sport and when you're really enjoying it, you're practicing, you're playing, you're winning. It's a lot of fun. Obviously, when you're losing, it's not so much fun, but hopefully you'll realize it's just a short-term blip in it all. But you can really savor it. You know, you can really enjoy the moment. So make a long story short with the deer in the back. The... Students who all do their home, home fun can often be rewarded through what's called a negative reinforcement. If you don't do your work, I'm calling home. Who will do their work if their parents are going to be calling home? Teacher says, hey, you know what? If you don't do the work, I'm going to call home. So everyone, tell me who will do their homework or their home fun. Raise up your hand one more time. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. So most of you do it. And in fact, especially if you have a strict teacher, most of you will do the work. And often the coaches are like that too. You know, they're like, they push you and push you and push you up until, and to make sure that you, you're really performing. But the reality is in the negative reinforcement realm, in other words, when you're reinforced, when you do your work because you're rewarded negatively, the long-term effects is not as good as if you are rewarded in a, give me a word, please. It starts with a letter P. Positive. Yes. Is that Steve? Yeah. Is it yeah or yes? Yes. Good. Sometimes I like when you blurt it out. Okay. So this was an example where you can just blurt it out. So that's basically a positive reinforcement. Like what could be a positive reinforcement of doing your home fund? What could be a positive reinforcement of, of really, you know, practicing is really seeing yourself improve is really improving your skills. So that's the positive reinforcement. You know, when Thomas Edison didn't invent, didn't find out how to invent the light bulb, you know, or the fact that he tried over 10,000 times, he wasn't getting paid. He was working and working and working until he finally got what he wanted. 
So that can be the positive reinforcement. So thank you, en français, le caribou has inspired me. Uh, Cristiano, I see your hand up. Is there a question? Okay, so perhaps it's still up from uh, the last time. I'll put his hand down and welcome everybody. We've got uh, uh, Mr. Coach Lemay that I would like to formally recognize in here. He's in charge of the Sport Etude program. Another hour of him uh, coming in here and thanking, thanking him very much for his presence. I'm sure you may or may not have heard of him because he's uh, working diligently and very hard behind the scenes to make sure all this goes well. Um, and so perhaps I can let him uh, say a few words of, uh, of welcome. Thank you, uh, Coach Doran. Uh, yes, no, it's always a pleasure. Um, whenever we have um, guest speakers like this or sports psychology sessions, um, we always learn regardless what how old we are, we learn something and uh, we take it uh, to another level. We take it with our families, we take it with our, our teams, we take it somewhere else. And it's, uh, you know, right now we're planting a seed and uh, we're really happy that, uh, you know, we have uh, quite a few participants. It's great, it's very positive. So uh, Coach Doran, thank you so much for, uh, for leading this and, um, have a good uh, hour, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. What I like about Coach LeMay is that he's using one of these uh, words that I like. It's the H word. And it ends in humble. It is? Humble. Humble. <laughs> Very good. Humble. Humble is a good characteristic to have, okay, when you're in flow. Flow is basically the psychological characteristic of peak performance. When you are going and doing things well. There is a recipe, and we'll go through a couple of these words, okay? Um, humble, positive, focused. You can use words that are in the present, which is very important. Especially now, uh, in the time of this recording, it's the pandemic, um, we're in the middle of it, we're at the end of it, uh, we're hopefully, hopefully a lot closer to the end than we are at the beginning, but we have to, in a way, cling to that positivity and trust our system that there are de better days ahead. And so, positive keywords. So, you know what? Um, let's play a little bit of a game, okay? Um, for example, we're going to get Patrick to start, okay? I say Patrick, but that's, I guess, the, uh, the father, okay? He'll try to see who you are in terms of the, the gallery. Take a look see the gallery you can click on uh, the zoom play around with some of the buttons okay try not to leave the meeting of course uh, keep yourselves on mute which is good um, video on which is also good as well it definitely shows professionalism okay video on definitely shows professionalism so i think my screen might be a little bit different than yours okay so perhaps i'll go from myself to Patrick, say one positive sports psychology word. If you're not sure, you can Google, Google positive words. Find out what can help you in your performance. Keep it positive. So I'll say, for example, motivated. And then I'll say the word Patrick. Patrick really means, what's your daughter's name? It's my son and it's Phoenix. Okay, I'm terribly sorry. So, so let's say I go to Phoenix, okay? Phoenix, okay, we're gonna go to uh, Phoenix. We'll say motivated and then I'll say Phoenix. So he's gonna say something, positive sports psychology word and then say the next person that you see on the list, okay? So be ready and uh, let's go. If they don't say anything, so make sure you're, you're muted, but then when you're called, you're unmute yourself. And if that doesn't happen in the next, you know, we'll say five seconds, then just say something else. So say motivated and then go to somebody else. Okay. So Phoenix, you're on motivated. Mm. Uh, something positive. Positive. Something positive. Yeah. 
happy? No, I don't happy. know. Happy. Good. So now hold on. You've already violated a couple of things here. I hear, do I hear mom in the background as well? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'd love to see mom as well just for a second, but this is a perfect example. You see? Hi, mom. How are you? Good. All righty. Phoenix, uh, you're very lucky. You've got great support. I can tell right away. Um, you know that feeling of like, you know, you want to help out your, your son, your, your, your daughter, your child. Let them, I'm not going to say suffer through it, but this is where your brain's like sort of fizzling a little bit. And that's okay. Let them struggle. That's part of the process. So don't say the word happy. Phoenix, you're on again. Phoenix, um, motivated. Uh, positive? Good. Okay. Now I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on you, Phoenix. Okay. Because we're going to start one more time. Because you're like, positive? That's not very positive. Positive. Okay. Last uh, chance. Phoenix, motivated accomplish good that's much better and then say somebody's name uh steve steve you're on um inspired good call someone else's name uh dante uh concentrated i guess okay so i'm gonna stop you for a second dante when you say concentrated, I guess, it's like saying a positive and a negative. If you have nothing good to say, don't say anything at all. If you're not sure of something, instead of saying, I don't know, say, I'm not sure. Sounds better. And while you're thinking, avoid, uh, just think, reflect, and silence is okay. So Dante, you're on again, please. Humble. Okay, good. Call someone else now, please. Noah. Good. Noah, you're on mute. Wait, what was the question? So a positive sports psychology word. A word? Please. Or a keyword. Um, um, uh, brave. Good. So while you choose somebody else, I don't know if you're going in order, but I see it in the gallery. There was an order that was going in. Uh, try to choose the next person. What I'm going to ask you to do is in the chat, I'm going to have what's called a check-in and check-out. I want to see who's here. Uh, I'm going to get you to check in. So fill out the attendance. You know, if you're in grade six, you, you put in that you're in grade six. And if you're in grade seven, well, there's a question. You put yourself that you're in grade seven. You'll notice that it's going to ask you to write down some positive keywords. I think it's a good idea that you grab even a pen or pencil. And not only do you type in these words, but you write them down as well in what's called a sports psychology binder. Okay, so the title you're going to see is our interviewee. Okay, the instructions are there. Check the chat. Check the chat. Check in. And Noah, I need another name, please. Call somebody else. And you're on mute, to Noah. Um, Nicholas. Good. Nicholas, you're on. You've got five seconds. Is that me? Yeah. If you want, let's go with first name and last name. Uh, my name is Adamo Monte. Good. Just tell me, for, tell me a positive sports psychology word. Uh, teamwork. Teamwork. That's a good one. And now call upon somebody else. Uh, I'll say Lola. Good. Let's go. Um, success. Good. So don't use the word um, okay? Say success and you move on. Yeah. 
Good, and you say somebody else. Uh, Maria. Respectful. One of my favorite words. I'd love to see you, uh, Maria. If I can just see you, beautiful, great. Okay, and choose somebody else. Juliana. Energetic. Good. Uh, Christopher. Uh, hard working. Okay, let's remove the uh part and just say hard working. Hard working. Oh, good. You see the difference? One is a little bit more professional, true? Yeah. Yeah or yes? Yes. Good. Um, Continue, please. Cristiano. Generous. I like that. Good. Next. Call somebody. George. Polite. Who did you call? Who did you call? Okay, so call somebody else, please. Okay, so I'm going to call somebody else as well. Uh, one of my favorite words, poise. Poise. You know, poise is something when things are going well and things are not going so well, you have poise. Poise, you know, leads up to another thing that I like is the nonverbal language. Um, you'll notice that I often sometimes use uh, tennis as one of my favorite sports. It's often because one of my favorite players is Roger Federer. And you, you would never see if he wins or loses the points based on his body language. It's really the same. Whether he's winning or whether he's losing, he's got poise. So when things are going well, things are not going well, it's staying even keel. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Try to control the controllables. A lot of things that we don't can't control right here, we often focus on trying to control things that we cannot control. Can we control the pandemic, yes or no? No. Can we control other people's reaction, yes or no? No. No. Can you control your reaction, yes or no? Yes. Can you control your attitude, yes or no? Yes. Yes. When I say get it, you say got it, get it. Got, got it. it. Got it. Got it. Uh, a little bit louder, please. Get it. Got it. Got it. Got, Got it. it. Got it. Okay. What about Eva? Poise. Um, perseverant. Wow. Good. Don't don't ask me. Tell me, Eva. Poise. Perseverant. Good. Choose somebody else. Uh, Sawyer. Inspired. Good. I am, I'm really liking this. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have in the chat, you've got a Google form, which gives you your attendance. So most of you are not filling it out yet, which is good. Okay. You're waiting, I would say, uh, towards the end of the interview. That's, you know, where you can write what you liked, what you didn't like, and some of these key words that we're having here. This is very good. Okay. Let's go a little bit faster. Who are you going to choose? I need a name. Is 
Iskander. Okay, yeah. Alex? Yes, hi there. Can you uh, mention a word? I just I just joined in, so I'm not sure where what you guys are asking. We're just uh, trying to get you to say a word, a positive sports psychology word. Determination. I like that. Now, you're going to notice when you see me in the hallways, a lot of students, when they see me, they don't say, hi, Coach D. They don't say hello. They just give me a positive sports psychology word, and that's what I love, okay? Uh, now you choose somebody else, uh, Mr. Aladala. I'm going to choose uh, uh, Juliana. Uh, energetic. Okay. So we're going to stop, okay? We're going to stop. I want to show you, okay, what... Um, the parents have received, okay, as a uh, an introduction to this uh, to this um, event, and you can see my screen. Yep. Yep. It looks something like this. Dear passionate LJA Sport parents and students, tonight is the first of our Thursday evening interviews with an elite athlete as part of the sports psychology sessions with Coach Doron. These athletes' interviews provide your child the opportunity to meet and learn from elite athletes who have successfully balanced the rigorous, the rigors of athletic training while maintaining a strong academic profile. Today's interview is former. QMJHL, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League player and Concordia Stingers hockey player, Alex Katirinakis. Alex is one of our alumni and recently stood up for the Montreal Canadiens and had a pro debut. He will share his knowledge and experience with Coach Doran on his pathway towards success. Alex will help us gain a better understanding of the psychological characteristics that it takes to be one of the best. Getting into flow is an integral part of achieving peak performance. The one hour session starts at 6 p.m. and the link is below. Prepare your questions and get into flow. So speaking of preparing questions, um, before I uh, ask if uh, Coach LeMay will be around by the end of the uh, session, perhaps we'll let him manage the questions. Uh, or perhaps it might be Mr. Ruji. Without further ado, what I'm going to do is pass it on to Mr. Ruji. Uh, we have our, um, our guest here. So I'm going to pass it on to Mr. Ruji, who is our principal at Laval Junior Academy. Before I let him say a few words, I would like to reiterate that this is the first time that some of you are here and incoming LJA students, you're in for a treat. It's an amazing school that you're going into. And I want to uh, personally thank Mr. Ruji for the opportunity of delivering these workshops. We're very lucky and blessed to be part of this group. And I hope that you make us all proud because in several years from now, you never know, the roles might be reversed and you might be coming in here years later and giving a speech. Mr. Ruji, uh, if you can just say a few words, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Doran. And uh, it's hard for me to just say a few words. If people know me well, I like to speak and I like to talk a little bit. So I will try to keep it short. Uh, welcome all our grade six students and parents who are here tonight uh, for this first special interview. We have a series of six uh, athletes that we're going to be interviewing over the next six weeks. And uh, so welcome to our grade six students, our grade sevens and our grade eights. You've participated in these sessions before. 
last year, and you're doing your sessions now with Coach Doron um, here at LJA. Mr. Doron, uh, very pleased to have you on board and offering these sports psychology sessions, both in school and uh, in these special sessions in the evening. Mr. LeMay, your tireless work every single day, coordinating our Sportitude program and making sure that all our students and all our teachers are working hand in hand to ensure the greatest success possible for our students. We're so happy uh, to share with everyone here tonight that our three Sportitude classes have an overall average of 89, 88, and 82%. So all three classes have a combined overall average that is close to 85% when we put them all together. So we're very proud of all that hard work that the students are putting in. And grade six students, we're excited to have you coming into the program and uh, working hard both in class and in your sport. Alex Kataranakis is one of our former students. And uh, Mr. LeMay, uh, Mr. LeMay, Mr. Doron, I would have uh, hoped that my name would have been called uh, during the time that we were playing that word game because my word would have been perseverance. And when we talk about Alex Kataranakis, I knew Alex when he was a student uh, here about uh, five, six, seven years ago, and he embodies perseverance. He worked hard. He worked hard in his sport and he worked hard at school. He was a good student and he was serious about his sport, and most of all, he was serious about his academics. So I'm very proud to have him here tonight to share his story and to inspire our grade six, grade seven, and grade eight students. Alex, welcome, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you very much for having me. To start, I just wanna thank Coach Doron, uh, Coach LeMay, Mr. Awadala, and yourself, Mr. Ruji, for having me, as well as the students and the parents who will be listening in. It makes me very happy for to give me an opportunity to give back to the kids. So thank you for having me. Okay, great. This is, uh, this is wonderful. I'm, uh, I have to admit, I get excited every time. We've been doing this. Uh, I would lie to you if I'm saying that we've been doing this for months. Um, we've been doing this for years. And I started the idea back in 2001 when I started my own business in sports psychology and getting flow in sports. Um, and it all, it all comes down to the fact, you know, over here between the, between the, uh, the ears, my motto is smart thinking. And so we, as a first year, I started the fist. Fist, what does that mean? Flow in, Sports and the T is Tuesdays and Thursdays. It really launched off with a lot of success. So we kind of turned it into uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and, and any other days. Um, it's really a conversation with elite athletes. Uh, we're very happy to have Alex uh, with us tonight. We've had other athletes in the past and some of you might have uh, remembered others that we've had, whether it was Carrie Fraser, Alexandra Wozniak. So Kerry Fraser is a hockey referee. Alexandra is a tennis player. Uh, we had another Alex who was a weightlifter, uh, Kurakis. And uh, really the list goes on. Okay. Uh, speaking of Alex, uh, beautiful picture over here. Okay. Uh, what a great feeling, I'm sure, to don the bleu blanc rouge shirt. Alex is a uh, Concordia University Stinger hockey player, uh, captain of the team, uh, played for the Armada. He had a QMJHL career, um, NHL camp experience. He had a, a pro debut with the uh, Montreal Canadiens as well. Uh, Greek descent. Um, former Laval Junior High School student, which, which really makes this whole thing, I'm sure, quite um, you know, more meaningful. I know when you give back to your alma mater, 
you give back to the school that you graduate from, it, uh, it makes it even more rewarding. He would like to be considered as someone who is respectful, ambitious, disciplined, loyal, hardworking, intense, efficient. So speaking of all these words, the students, you can write down some of these words. Okay, it's worth repeating. Disciplined, loyal, hardworking. I've asked for 10, but go ahead. Do you want to impress me and put 20 and put 30? Go ahead. Um, uh, uh, Alex went on from Laval Junior High School to Laval Senior High School. Then he went off to Vanier and then Concordia University. And um, he's, uh, you know, we, we, we had to kind of dig up a couple of, uh, of videos that, um, that I'd like to share with you. So take a look at this. I just want to make sure that I have the uh, right buttons clicked. Share sound. That's uh, often a good one to, to push. And so let me share this one with you. Was fun, um, and here's another one. We won't see it all. Let's just take a first look at the first few moments. Je suis en compagnie d'Alexander Katerinakis pour nos entrevues du 10e anniversaire. Allô, Alexander, comment ça va? Ça va bien, toi? Oui, merci. Je voulais savoir, en fait, ça fait pas si longtemps que ça que tu n'es plus avec l'Armada. Ta dernière saison était en 2018-2019. Où es-tu rendu, justement, dans ta vie? So, although it's in French, you know, this interview is just asking him uh, where he is uh, right now. Fait que maintenant, je suis rendu à, à l'Université de Concordia. Je suis un étudiant athlète. And so he goes on and uh, discusses that. But I think while we have him live, perhaps let's welcome him one more time and then perhaps uh, let him uh, fill in the gaps in terms of um, uh, letting us know what his, his pathway was from Laval Junior Academy. Where did you go from there? And once again, welcome again. Thank you, thank you. So, um... So would you like me to start from right after senior high school? Let's say you're uh, 13, 12, 13 years old. Well, you know, you attended Laval Junior Academy. I know we have a former teacher that was here as well with uh, Mr. Awadella. Perhaps uh, start off from there. Uh, how was your experience at the school and, and with him in particular? All right. So, I mean, to begin, honestly, I came into high school pretty much like all of you, all the kids in the Zoom conference. Um, you know, I was finishing elementary school. I was going into high school um, with no, not really a plan. I knew that I loved hockey and I knew that I liked school. So for me, I went into junior high school uh, playing with my city team as well. Um, I met Mr. Awadala, like most of you know. And um, after I finished my two years of junior high school, I went on to senior high school. And um, from there, I noticed that hockey started to get more, a bit more serious in terms of comp uh, competitiveness and, uh, and of uh, caliber. So going into secondary three, I was playing in, I was going, I was playing Bantam. So that was in my draft year. I went to secondary four. Um, after secondary four was my draft year. So it was June of secondary four. I was in senior high school and I mean, 
again, I was still very young. I was only 15 years old, not too far from you guys. And um, like I said, it started to get very competitive. Uh, after my year of midget hockey, there was a QMJHL draft in which I was fortunate enough to get drafted by the uh, Armada of blainville beaubriand And then um, I was playing as a 16-year-old, which is the first year you're eligible to play. And I was also going to Laval Senior Academy, it was called. So, no, Laurier Senior Academy. So um, I was still playing, I was playing junior hockey while being in high school. So that was really exciting for me because I was with all my friends that I grew up from the age of, you know, 12 years old from secondary one to uh, 16 years old. Um, I was with all my friends and I was playing junior hockey. So that was very exciting. And just to be in that, in, in a school that I, you know, I start when to start in a school where you don't, you know, you're not playing junior hockey, obviously. And then you start playing junior hockey in the same school with the same friends with the same group of teachers and environment. It was really exciting for me. And I really cherished the moments I had in my final year of high school while playing junior hockey for sure. Sorry, Coach Doran, if you were speaking, I don't think I was able to hear. So, sorry about that. You're, uh, you're 18, 19 years old, okay? You're playing uh, junior major uh, um, hockey. How was that experience? Uh, I've seen you got into a couple of scraps. So. Yeah. So the um, I'll just start by saying because I know I at least for myself when I was the kid's age now in grade six, grade seven, going to grade eight two, I didn't really understand what the QMJHL was. So for those that, of you that don't know, it's it's basically um, I, I, from ages sixteen to twenty. It's it's basically technically the best players age 16 to 20 from all of Quebec and in the Maritimes, which is a bit more in the East coast of Canada pulled into one league to play. So um, anyways, so at 18 and 19 years old yet, yeah, th those years were the years that my junior team and I, we had the most success because we reached the finals twice, the finals of our league, you know, like playoffs the way you guys have playoffs. Um, those were exciting years to play because you know, when you're winning, it's obviously fun and it's contagious. So things just flow in the right direction. Unfortunately, we didn't win in both of the years, but there was still a lot of things that we learned. And there was still many things that, you know, that I still have with me today in terms of what I've learned. But uh, definitely those were uh, years that were very memorable. You know, when you go to the playoffs, like the NHL, you have four rounds and you play best of seven series. So those were very... I mean, you're playing one night, you have a break one night, the next night after that, you're playing again. So it's like, all you're doing is playing hockey. And what was even, what was pretty interesting is that at the same time in playoffs, we still have school to do. Like school is still very important and it's not just put on a back burner. So uh, I remember it was, you're in playoffs, going deep into the playoffs. You're thinking about winning the cup in the finals, but you know that you had like a test coming up or a paper coming up that you had to write. So many of us on the buses, or even the planes, we were doing homework. So that was uh, another interesting aspect, but definitely 18 and 19 were very memorable years where we had uh, long cup runs. Uh, if ever you want to get some bonus points with me, you'd ha definitely have the word flow in your, um, in your list of words. Um, how would you describe flow? You said flow stood for, um, you know, flow is basically the uh, general characteristic of peak performance. Um, I guess I can rephrase my question is how do you get into flow? How do you get into the zone? Right. You mentioned that actually brings up something that I, one of my coaches taught me. It was a pretty interesting, it was pretty actually very funny. We were, uh, we were going through a tough stretch in the year. You know, we were losing games or even when we were winning games, it was like we weren't winning the right way. 
you know, it was kind of luck. And uh, so our coach comes into the locker room the day after a game and he goes, uh, what's wrong with you guys? You guys don't have confidence. And a lot of the guys are like, you know, our, like our heads are between our legs. And he's like, okay, who here doesn't have confidence? So some guys are like raising their hands. So what he does is he writes confidence on a post-it, on a yellow post-it, and he gives it to us. He goes, here you go. You have confidence. So we're like, what's this piece of paper? I don't, what is it going to do? It doesn't really give me confidence. He goes, you don't just get confidence. What gives you confidence are, in my case, when Coach Dorn asked me what makes me who I am, it's all the attributes that, make, that, that I find in myself that give me confidence. So whether it's determination, in my case, it was the respect, the loyalty, the intensity, all these little attributes that you put, that you make sure you, get, you put in your daily lifestyle, that's what will give you confidence. And if I'm to relate it to flow, that is what's going to flow you to a superior level, whether it's schooling, academics, or it's hockey. It's all these little attributes that you live by on a day-to-day basis that will give you that confidence and flow you in the best direction. So to answer your question, it's, it's, you don't just get confidence. You know, you don't just be good at school. You're not just good at a sport, whether it's hockey or soccer, or whatever sport or concentration you're going to. It's all these little attributes that you're going to instill in your day-to-day lifestyle that will flow you in the best direction. If that's well, um, I have to, you know, agree with you generally. I, I have to say that um, the word flow, on the other hand, is a little bit overrated because I would say 99% of the time you're trying to get into flow because it's really hard to have those uh, three goal games, four goal games, five goal games, you know. It's really hard to be amazing all the time. So it's really only the 1% of the time that you're really there and then the other 99%, you're trying to get there, you know? So I like to say you're trying to create, recreate, and maintain flow in sports, you see? But one of the things that you said was loyalty. And I, uh, you know, looking at your profile and the number of years that you stayed with the same team, that showed a high loyalty. How, how come? And how do you stay loyal like that? You know, uh, it's interesting because in, when you're going to, when you start your junior hockey career, uh, it's kind of rare that you stay with an organization for your whole junior career. A lot of the times in junior hockey, a team will go through peaks and then lows. And within this, you know, teams will trade off a lot of their players, you know, to acquire new assets or draft picks and they'll restart the whole process, you know? So for me, I was lucky enough to stay within the organization through the peak years of, let's say, my 18 and 19-year-old year. But prior to that, they, we didn't necessarily have peak years. We were kind of had a rebuild. And I was fortunate enough to stay within the same organization. And um, to be honest, um, when I say it, when I speak of loyalty, it's for me personally, I bought in to the program and to the system that the Armada was, was you know, was subjecting us to. So for me, I mean, because I was buying into the system, I wanted to be there. I wanted to learn new things. Going in from 16 years old, you know, you learn many things. And some things you will accept and some things you reject. For me, I, was, I wanted to accept the things that I was being taught. And in my case, it led me to staying there for five years with the same organization, going through peaks and going through lows. Now, it's interesting how nowadays uh, someone who will pay a dollar more people will just jump ship you know Uh, but if you're really loyal you know if you're true you stay no matter what as they say in marriage you know through thick and thin uh, as a as a you know in the sports and, and in in my career as a mental performance consultant I've seen thousands of athletes and that's one of the things that's just so hard you know you take a puck to the to the face you know the the sticks and the injuries all this for a team and then next thing you know you get traded it's hard and then how do you go to the next team and do the same thing and you know why am i going to do that but i often try to tell the athletes you bring back to who are you playing for are you playing for the coach are you playing for the fans 
Are you playing for your, your next contract? You know, you're playing for yourself. Why do you do, I don't call it homework. I call it home fun. Why do you do your home fun? You're doing it for yourself. Why do you practice? You're doing it for yourself. And the sooner you realize that, the happier you're going to be. I'm not sure if you agree with that. No, I definitely do. And, you know, for example, when you get to junior hockey, you're, not, you're doing it for yourself. But at the same time, you've reached a level where the other players there, they're in the same boat as you. So we're all pulling in the same direction, you know, on our own little path towards excellence, but also for a team achievement of excellence. So I definitely yeah. agree with you. I'd have to take it one step further and uh, go to the coach. And what is the coach trying to do? He's trying to get to the next level too. He wants to make it in the NHL, you know? He, uh, he wants to take his career. So he's trying ways. And you think of the teachers as well. Every teacher has a different way to motivate you. It may not be the best. Oh, I can't believe he's doing this and she's doing that. Like for me, I always go with positive. For me, everywhere I run, you know, whether it's my students in my classroom, whether it's the athletes in my office, whether it's uh, campers in my business, it's positive, positive, positive. For me, positive trumps everything, but it's not once or twice. It's hundreds of times. Unfortunately, you can get 99, we'll call it positive reinforcement, and then you get one bad experience, and then boom. Oh, I can't believe it. All that for nothing. No. You build, you build, and you build. So I think it's worth, you know, thinking about all this, especially in the time of the pandemic, uh, where people are stretched to the limits, people are fed up, people are tired. You know, uh, I also noticed, for example, you got hurt. You know, I think you, uh, you had a shoulder injury. Uh, and everyone, unfortunately, when playing, is going to get hurt in some way or another. Like your body is not going to feel good. How do you deal with that? How do you get back? How do you play again? Yeah. Uh, being an athlete, your injuries are, it's part of the game. Um, you know, to be honest, I really have to really thank the, the athletic therapist that I was dealing with in junior. He, his name was Frank. He, he was a big reason as to, you know, when you're young at 16, 17. And for my case, I dealt, I got shoulder surgery at 16. So, it was a pretty serious injury because I was out for like six months. And, um, you know, when you're around people, especially experienced people, you know, like my Frank, the athletic therapist, he was always assuring me that the injury, that he'll take care of the injury, of the inflammation, of the swelling, of my range of mobility. So him being there was a huge support. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it has to do with the athlete as well when you get an injury, you're going to go through your rehab. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to sit out a few months and then, you know, it's all on a timeline. You can't just start working out your muscles again, three weeks after surgery when you don't even have range of motion kind of thing. So um, mental resiliency for sure. Patience on 100%. But I mean, ju it's just the will to want to get back to the game. That'll drive you there. The passion towards getting back to the game, it'll bring you, It'll, it'll, it'll set your mind straight and, and put you on a path. That was at least from my, from my experience. You know, Alex, what you're saying uh, is really amazing. I'll be honest with you. He's, you know, Alex is mentioning so many of these positive words. And I, and I hope you, you write these down. Resilience. Uh, passion. Notice Every, you know, five, six words coming out of his mouth is just another positive sports psychology word. So it's just, it's amazing how this stuff, things that you cannot see, play a role in the path of success. So, you know, a trust, a trust not only in yourself, but in the system. So that's great. Listen, I, I don't want to talk too much about negativity, but I'm going to just take it one more step further, you know. Um, uh, I know before we, we talked about uh, a loss, you know, in your life, while you were playing, there was someone who passed away during, uh, you know, during your season. And 
you know, this happens to a lot of us. The older we get, the more people that we see around us uh, die. How did you deal with that? How did your team deal with that? How do you rebound back after death? Yeah, so I remember it was, um, it was in the month of March and uh, my coach, Bruce Richardson at the time, he, uh, he gives me a call on a Sunday morning and I was actually going to Cabana Sirk. That's how random it was. And he goes, hey, Kat, um, I know this is off guard, but Alec, one of our teammates, Alec Reed, he, had, um, he was epileptic and he had an attack on the Saturday in the evening, the mo- at like one in the morning, if you will. And uh, he, the attack was pretty strong and he, uh, he didn't make it through. So that was... When it's a sudden death like that, you're like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, we honestly, it was hard. You didn't want it. You believe it. You couldn't believe it. So we had a team meeting and then it's like, you see, you know, the guys who were close to him who got hit really hard because they grew up with him. I only knew Alec for four months at the time because we had, it was that one season we played together, but I had teammates who had known him since they were minor hockey about your age, 12, 13 years old, 10, 11, 12. And uh, for them to see how hard it hit them, that was like, whoa. But then again, it's like, okay, our teammate, our teammate died. It was really like suddenly, you know, all of a sudden you're missing a teammate. And, you know, you experience things in a team that bring you close, like winning and the memories that you form together. But this impact, the impact it had on our team, that late in the season, going into playoffs, it was like, wait, wait a second. All of a sudden, like, we wanted to win that much more. We wanted to do the right thing that much more. Every little detail in the game, from making a pass to a back check to just doing, just knowing, oh, I'm going to go the extra mile just because. Honestly, it had to do with the fact that we lost a teammate. So if I'm to say anything positive about that, it was the effect that he had on the team gelling afterwards that no, no, no physical memory between a, no, between a, a, a teammate, no experiencing teammate can make you that closer. It was, it was literally the collect connection we had with Alec and him passing that made our whole team gel and excel in the playoff run. It's, uh, it's no wonder why even professional teams um, use that as an emotional lift. They put numbers in the back of the crease they put numbers on uh, the shirt. They put stuff on a helmet. Uh, from a psychological point of view, it's a motivator. It's, uh, it's what I like to call inspirational. It, it draws on emotion. And that can help you in that one extra percent. And that's, uh, that's great. I mean, one of, the, one of the things I always work on with my athletes is uh, turning a negative into a positive. And it's a hard one. It's a hard one. But even with death, you know, and, and death, we're not going to make it into a spiritual class here, but it's not, you know, it's sometimes it's just cut short and we have to find meaning, you know, and, and, and look at the path. Some people learn this early and some people learn this late and some unfortunately never learn it at all. So hopefully we can hammer this home so we could get into flow we could get a taste of success. Okay, um, we're gonna end off with two things. We're gonna call this, uh, we do something that's called the rapid fire. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, tell you a couple of questions very quickly. You have about three seconds to answer them, okay? Uh, before, <laughs> you see, what I like about Alex, you see, and um, you know, it's just, that's what it is, it's like, you know, the puck comes here, it goes there, and then, you know, you got to make it up on the fly sometimes. Uh, things are not perfect. You're not going to have a direct path towards success. It's up, down, 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 up, down, up, you know, and rapid fire, and it's like, bring it on, you know. Uh, beautiful. Uh, who, who is, who's in the background there? Oh, that's my little uh, dog. His name's Nico. Nico, wow. Yeah. Welcome, Here. Nico. So, um I think the bottom line is that you want to have the ball. You want to have the puck when it counts the most. So that's a good thing. 
I'm just going to tell my students, okay, to fill out that attendance form. It's in the chat, okay. You'll see a question, are you in grade six? So you fill out the grade six. If you're in grade seven or eight, you fill out the form. If you're in grade seven or eight, write down some of these positive sports psychology words, okay? So Alex, um, are you ready? Yes. That's one of my favorite words, by the way, ready, okay? So favorite breakfast meal? Avocado toast and egg. Your role model? My dad. Uh, and by the way, any other, uh, any other students want to throw in a rapid fire question? You can in the, uh, in the chat. And we'll also entertain questions the last few minutes. OK? Uh, we have dog or cat? Dog. <laughs> Optimistic or pessimistic? Optimistic. Uh, how do you deal with internal competition? Work harder. That's a great answer. Uh, do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? I do. I have a girlfriend of uh, eight and a half years. Wow. Uh, most embarrassing moment as a player? Stepping on the ice with my skate guards and wiping out. <laughs> uh, name one of your short-term goals. Finnish University. One of your long-term goals? Get married, have a kid, have kids. Uh, would you rather, would you rather win it for the team or avoid losing? Would avoid you rather losing. win it for the team or avoid losing? I would avoid losing at all costs. If, but if I'm winning it for the team, it's a win, right? Okay, how about uh, favorite teacher at LJA? <laughs> uh, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> Mr. Awadala, I've had a few, but Mr. Awadala was 100% there. Hot dog or hamburger? Hamburger. Favorite thing to eat before the game? Uh, baked salmon, rice, and a bit of veggies. Favorite thing to eat before the game? Um, a bit of dark chocolate, maybe, yeah, a bit of dark chocolate, you know, about 45 minutes before the game. Another message uh, has to do with your idol. I know you spoke about your father. Uh, perhaps uh, tell us a story. About my father? Yeah. Why is he your idol? Okay, so like you had mentioned before, being of Greek descent, um, my father is actually an, an immigrant. And my father, my mother, my mother was born here, Canadian, but of Greek descent. Um, just the simple fact of him not knowing much about hockey, yet, you know, being there and whether it was going to a share book for a hockey tournament or a, a piece of equipment, he didn't really know what, but he knew why. So that's why, you know, the success I've gotten so far and where I'm at right now and where I where I hope to be, where I, where I want to get, it has a lot to do with, you know, the backbone of him. That's why. Okay. Um, so maybe now what I'd like to do is uh, pass it on to anybody else who has some questions. Uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know if uh, either Mr. Ruji, Mr. Awadala uh, would like to... Students, um, some of the students had put put some questions in the chat we can get to that after for sure so after if anybody else wants to speak mr Aladella, perhaps i can ask you to maybe uh read some of the questions like it says your favorite hockey player sure uh favorite hockey player uh what's your what actually what's your favorite hockey team oh favorite hockey team is the montreal canadians and if I can follow up on that, how was your experience in that that training camp? That must have been on another level. Yeah, honestly. Um, so uh, when I got the invite to, uh, I got an invitation to the development camp first, which is right after the NHL draft. It's when basically they draft the players and they're like, okay, we drafted, uh, we drafted, uh, Let's say we drafted Cristiano, Christopher, 
Ella, you know, Isabella. We drafted all you guys. You guys are Montreal Canadiens prospects. You guys are going to come out to Montreal and we're going to practice. So for me, I wasn't drafted, but I was invited into that group. So we go to the, we go to Montreal Canadiens development camp. We practice for a week, we play some games. And then basically you get invited again to the rookie camp. It's if they like you, you know, in June, they invite you in September. So I was fortunate enough to get invited a second time in September. And that's when you go to camp and this is the fun part because you see all the NHL players. And uh, before I get to a little story about that, I just wanted to say like, when you go to an NHL camp, it's like, whoa, wait a second. Like you go from like LJA to Harvard University in terms of that, you know? It's like you see the, the facilities, the, the services, the, the staff, how, how, on, you know, like how on point they are. It's all the little details that you're like, oh, wow, this is the NHL. And a funny little story is that uh, I forget which day of camp it was, but all the, the big guys started arriving. You know, uh, at the time, Max Domi got traded, so he showed up. You know, he had his bag. He had literally just got off the plane. And as I'm walking in the hallway, I see this tall guy. And as I'm getting closer, I'm like, oh, my, holy Moses, that's Carey Price. And he goes, hey, how are you? And I was just, I was so, like, caught off guard. Like, what? A week ago, I was at home, like, thinking I'm going to camp. Now, a week later, like, Carey Price is just saying, hey, how are you to me? For a second, I, like, I just, like, kind of blabbed out, like, a, a good. And then I walked. And then I was like, what the hell just happened? Like, Carey Price is saying hi to me, like. I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. Like he's a Carey Price and I'm an invite to an NHL camp. So it was, it was really a pretty, pretty interesting moment given the fact that Montreal Canadiens is like your hometown team growing up. You're always watching them, but yeah, the all in all the Montreal Canadiens camp was a, it was a surreal experience. Alex, so we're going to, Alex uh, Awadella, we're, uh, sorry, Mr. Awadella, we're going to just maybe uh, limit it to maybe two more questions, okay? Because uh, otherwise, I think we might keep uh, Alex How here. about uh, your favorite hockey player? My favorite hockey player? I mean, growing up, it was Sidney Crosby by a mile. But uh, I've, never, I, I've never pinpointed down to a favorite, especially now because of the talent pool. I love a bunch of players. I love the Mc, Connor McDavid. I love the Nathan McKinnon. But if I'm to stick to one player, I would say Sidney Crosby, just because of how professional he's been in his career and how dominated he's been and how much success he's had. Okay, if we, if we could just, if we could just uh, take that question to another level and say, uh, who would you compare yourself to as a hockey player? Um, you know, every time somebody is asking that question, I've never known who to say. Because at the end of the day, I'm not an NHL player. <laughs> but uh, I love to think of my, at least I love to think of my work, my hard work ethic, similar to a Brendan Gallagher. A lot of the kids here, you know, they know how, how annoying he is in front of the net, how resilient he is. You know, he, he'll eat a puck in the mouth, but it'll probably fall in front of him and he'll put it in back of the net. Um, so to think, you know, to, 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 to mirror my game around that is something I like to do, Brendan Gallagher. I know that, uh, you know, you've basically moved into more of a business background now. I imagine you're pretty good with numbers. I'd like to think so. What percentage, you know, one out of how much can you say, generally speaking, someone can turn professional? That is... Um... You know, to think of a number basis, it's, it's, it's hard to do because they say it's harder to become, it's, it's, it's more difficult to become an NHL player than it is to become a doctor. But the thing is, if you're, if you're passionate about what you do, if you love what you do, if you're hardworking, the way I, the way I, you know, for me, it's like at one point, they're going to have nobody else left to choose. You're going to be the last one there. Like, hey, I'm here. I'm still here. You know, a lot of the players, they give up after junior hockey, mid, middle of university career, they'll just give up. And then you get, forgotten, you get forgotten about. So to think of a number, I don't want to say, oh, it's 10%. It's 1%. It's 0.0001%. I don't like to think of that because I feel like there's too much fear monger lingering behind it. What I do want to say is, though, what, what I do want to say is that 
just be the last one standing. That is something you can control. You could control how hard you work, how much you want it, how passionate you are towards something. If you're the last one standing, they're going to be like, well, I guess we'll just take Katernakis. He's the last one there. <laughs> and you ended up being captain uh, of the Armada team? Yep. Captain so, of the uh, Concordia Stingers? Captain of the Armada team in my last year junior. My Concordia career, I'm, I'm going on my second year now, in which, because of COVID, we weren't able to have a season. So I only completed one full season with the team being a, a rookie. And uh, were you uh, also chosen assistant captain or captain? No, the, those are the, the alternate and, the, and captain are for like the graduating classes. Right, right. So right. being a rookie, they, it would be, it just, it's not, it's not, it's not a thing, yeah. but um, I'm definitely aiming, you know, I mean, aiming the way I, you know, I choose to present myself or how I, you know, going into my last year of university next year, if we have a season, I hope I would love to be one for sure. An alternate or a captain for sure. Which position do you play? Right winger. Okay. Okay. Um, I think this is going to put an end to, uh, to this interview. I want to thank you from uh, the bottom of our hearts, all of us at Laval Junior Academy. I know Mr. Ruji has his hand up. He's waiting patiently. So uh, I will take the opportunity to thank you very much. Um, it was amazing. I speak, I, I'm sure, on behalf of a lot of the students and parents listening. We had uh, pretty much a full house. Uh, a lot of people came in here. I, I hope they'll gain value out of this. And uh, thank, you once, uh, thank you once again. Thank you for having me. And I definitely look forward to the next couple of sessions. And thank you for the kids for being patient. I know it's, you know, it's, you guys had a long day of school, but thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope you guys, you know, I hope I can give you little tips. And if you have any questions, anything you want to talk about, just know that I was in your shoes at your age. So just know that you have someone to ask. If you have a question, don't, don't feel shy. Ask away. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Anytime. Alex, thank you, uh, Alex. Just before you, we Alex. let you go. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank, you, Alex. thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Before uh, before we put an official just before we all sign off, uh, Alex, just before you go, um, two things. I, I loved everything you said. It's uh, and what Coach Doron was uh, highlighting all of the amazing uh, inspirational words that you used uh, to describe your experience. So we've got uh, 12, 13 year olds uh, in the audience. You were once uh, in their shoes, as you said before, perhaps uh, three words that you could leave them with uh, to help them be successful. What would be three words that you would like them to remember so that they can be successful in their um, young careers. So the first one I'll say is respect. You, you, you can go a million miles with respect. The second word is passion. Because when you're passionate about something, whether it's hockey, whether it's school, whether it's painting, drawing, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sport. It can be anything in the world, whatever it is that's unique to you. If you're passionate about it, you have an edge automatically. And the third word would be, well, it's actually two words. It's hardworking. Because when you, when you combine passion and hard work, you're setting yourself on the best course because you're passionate about what you do and your hard work is going to perfect that craft. Okay, Excellent. Alex, uh, one of the things that we've started uh, recently here at the school is uh, we've started creating banners of some of our former students. And the banners of uh, these individual success stories, they hang on the second floor in the community hall. And uh, I'm extending the invitation out to you right here, right now in front of everyone. I'd like to put you up on a banner here because you're an inspiration for our students. 
and everything that you've said here tonight, when these students walk the halls and they see your banner with your face and your name, uh, I want them to remember the things that you just talked about tonight. The respect, the passion, the hard work, um, the mental resilience, all of these things are things that are inspiring and are gonna help our students succeed. So I'm gonna get uh, your email address from uh, Coach Doron after this session. I'll send you some information. And if you're game, uh, we're gonna put you on a banner here in your old school. I 100% accept the invitation and I'm honored. I'm honestly, a lot of the happiness right now just to hear that from yourself, you know, Mr. Ruji. And I just want to read and say it again. And like for all these, for all you little guys, little girls, to me, you're growing up in the school that I grew up in, in the community that I grew up in. So it's like, consider yourselves little brothers, little sisters. To me, this is like a, you know, when you're, when you, for myself, this is like an organization. When I talk about loyalty, it's loyal to the cause, loyal to the school, to the organization. So we're all one together. We all have something in common right now. So thank you so much. That honestly, a lot of happiness, a lot of emotion right now. So thank That's you. That's great. Man. So nice. Uh, I want to thank Alex. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Awadala, who also helped uh, match us here. This is great. Uh, pleasure. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you all in the hallways. We'll see you all next uh, Thursday for another new guest speaker. Okay. Uh, next week's speaker is uh, in the football realm. Okay. His name is Steve Alexandre and uh, you're in for a treat with him. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Thank you. Bye, Alex. Sign out. Positive word and sign out. Bye. Resilience. Creative. <laughs>